What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and Razer just released a refreshed version of my favorite headset of all time from them, and damn is this impressive. So Razer just dropped a brand new 2023 upgrade to the Razer Black Shark V2 Pro wireless gaming headset. While at first you'd be hard pressed to see any difference between this and the original, I can say the upgrades we do have are substantial. Let's check it all out, we'll go over it all in case you're interested in the brand new Black Shark V2 Pros. So for starters, let's get the most important one right up front. We have a brand new microphone, which has significantly better sound quality over the original. When that released towards the end of 2020, everyone said the same thing, you know, great headset, crappy mic. But now it's using a redesigned super wideband unidirectional mic with a 100 Hertz to 10 kilohertz frequency response. And honestly, sounds night and day. You'll hear that in a minute. The new V2 Pro also has USB-C for charging versus micro USB, and you get a new 70 hour battery with six hours of play from just a 15 minute charge. Both versions do look identical in person. You know, same stitching, same materials, button placement, volume knob on the left ear cup. There is Bluetooth built in now in this model, but there is one more physical difference you can barely spot, and that's the new EQ button on the bottom backside of the right ear cup. While EQing your headset isn't brand new for Razer, the ability to swap between the onboard saved EQs is. There are five by default, including a custom EQ you can create, plus new ProTune profiles for specific games. So sure, you have your standard, you know, game, music, movie EQs. Like I said, the ability to also create your custom ones. But now you can set it and forget it, meaning you don't even need Synapse once you create or save your custom EQ to the headset because they're all saved on board. You could even uninstall Synapse if you want once you have your go-to audio profiles. But what I really like are their new pro-tuned audio profiles, they call them. It's pretty much specific EQs for certain games, you know, Call of Duty, Apex, Valorant, it's all built in there. You could cycle between those as well. But what I'm a big fan of is how they have the frequency response broken down. That's gonna be huge for beginners or people who don't know how to EQ or what they're doing. It shows you those frequency responses broken down for things like explosions, footsteps, even which bands to adjust if you want more immersion in game. So I really like that user-friendly breakdown. All right, so for the mic test, I want to start you off with the 2020 Razer Black Shark V2 Pro mic. So you could hear how the original model sound when this came out nearly three years ago using their HyperClear Super Cardioid mic. Again, this, the 2020 Razer Black Shark V2 Pro. Now, this is the microphone on the brand new Razer Black Shark V2 Pro for 2023 with their new redesigned HyperClear Wideband Omnidirectional mic. You can immediately tell and notice a difference over the original with just how natural this sounds. The tone of my voice sounds just, you know, like it does in real life. It doesn't have that typical microphone quality sound that a lot of these uh, headsets do. So much more natural tone to my voice and for the mic test here. This is all stock unedited audio. Then how about for a third comparison for you guys so you can hear the mic of the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pro, which is probably one of the most popular wireless gaming headsets that came out in 2022. So you could hear the drastic difference with the Black Shark V2 Pro models versus the SteelSeries model from last year. Again, just to give you an extra comparison. Seal Series Arctis Nova Pro, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The 2020 Razer Black Shark V2 Pro, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. 2023 Razer Black Shark V2 Pro, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Now, real quick, I mentioned before, the mic test was stock and unedited. However, in Synapse, there are some settings, including mic EQs and enhancements you can do to bring out more if you want to mess with the mic. So again, right now, this is stock of how it sounds. Uh, there are some enhancements like vocal clarity, which does, you know, sort of bump it up a bit, give it more life. Um, I usually just keep it off, though. And there is a noise canceling setting. So this is how it sounds off. I'll do some typing on the keyboard behind me, which which has tactile switches, so not smooth linears, not loud uh, clickies, right in the middle there. That's how it sounds with it off. This is now with it on at around 50%. And uh, from what I heard, it does a pretty good job naturally with the omnidirectional mic um, at just you know eliminating the background noise due to the nature of how the mic's designed. But yes, that is now 
with it on. And we are back to off. Then real quick, just over to the mic EQs. This is the stock EQ. We now have mic boost, which definitely gives my voice more body. It greatly enhances the mids. Uh, broadcaster definitely bumps up the bass a bit, so I have more of that bassy umph to my voice. Um, this is kind of what you would hear for, like I guess, like a, uh, a broadcaster in the esports setting. Uh, conference now boosts the mids a bit, so I should have more like a higher end clarity to my voice. And then you have just the default, and the last one is a custom, so you can go in and make your own EQs. Uh, but yes, I mean, they really don't sound too bad. I like mic boost. I like broadcast. Conference not the best, but you have these options here to create your own EQ, make your mic sound the way you want. And we also have a mic monitoring section, side tone. This is a big deal to a lot of people. You can turn this on and hear your voice directly in your headset so you can monitor your voice real time. I don't use it. I know it's a big deal out there. You do have the side tone setting. And you can adjust the volume of the side tone as well. So that mic speaks for itself, literally. That difference between not only the original Black Shark V2 Pro from 2020 is night and day, but also comparing it to the Arctis Nova Pro from last year, it is mind blowing at just how clear and natural it sounds. It doesn't sound tinny, you know, it doesn't have that sort of slight distortion to it where it kind of sounds like you're over a radio. A natural sounding mic on a wireless headset, very hard to come by. Razer knocked it out of the park with this new mic upgrade. Now in terms of comfort, these have always been a favorite of mine just due to the overall design because it really does make it so comfy to wear and use for those long gaming sessions. There's no pressure points really. They're deceivingly light. They may appear kind of like bigger and bulky, but honestly, it just auto adjusts when it's on your head and it feels really nice. The over the ear oval um, ear pads here, it all feels identical to the Black Shark V2 Pro from just a few years ago. There was some marketing material when they released these about the uh, the breathable memory foam headband and the ear cups, but I looked back, it's that same marketing material from a few years back as well. It feels identical, but yes, extremely comfortable to wear. I love how on the ear cups, there's no real physical adjustment to be made. And because of these rods in the wire frame here going into the headband, it makes it very, very flexible and adjustable. Also for the ear cups in terms of rotating it, just so you can get that best, most natural fit. And also, as I do for you guys, a glasses test. Uh, just like I said a few years ago when I checked out the Black Shark V2 Pro, still super comfortable. There is no pressure going in where the side of my glasses meets the actual um, ear pad here. So all's good in terms of comfort. Now, sure, I always like when headsets allow you to rotate the ear cups 90 degrees to lay like flat on your desk around your neck. These can't do that, but honestly, not a big deal at all. All of my testing was done over the 2.4 gigahertz dongle, um, but like I said before, this does now have Bluetooth built in, which the 2020 model did not. I personally never use Bluetooth and never have it connected to my phone, uh, just with a dongle to my PC. You can use that though with your Switch. PS5, PS4, uh, but yeah, I'm not a Bluetooth guy, so I can't really speak on that. You know, I don't know if it's because maybe they have came out three years ago and I've kind of forgot about them or I've tried numerous headsets since, but I forgot how incredible these sound. What I'm really impressed with is like I was talking about before, with the ability to get the custom EQs, you can really stretch these EQs, make your own custom ones without distorting or killing your audio overall. It doesn't get muddied out. It doesn't crackle at high volumes when you boost the highs all the way. You can really push these. And what's funny is it's the same 50 millimeter Triforce drivers that we've had. It just goes to show you how good the drivers themselves are. But even stock, the directional audio is superb. Being able to pinpoint where certain enemies are behind you, directional audio in terms of that leverage, identifying whether they're above me, below me. Soundstage isn't anything mind blowing, but it's kind of to be expected since these aren't open back, you know, they're closed back like 99% of gaming headsets are. So I can't really knock it for that. I'm just used to my open back headphones. But if you were to tell me just to use these stock, no EQing, no messing around, I'd be content. One of the things you can also do in Synapse is enable their THX spatial audio, which is, you know, a sort of emulated surround sound. But again, there's 
Honestly, not a big difference between THX and stereo audio, which all the more just goes to show you how well and finely tuned the drivers are stock that you don't need to turn on THX. Your directional awareness just by using the stock stereo experience is honestly really impressive and I just say disregard turning on the THX. So at the end of the day, Razer has an absolute winner here with the new Black Shark V2 Pro. The build, the mic, the sound quality, all puts this up for consideration for crowning this the best gaming headset of 2023. Even though it's relatively early in the year, yes, this is gonna be really hard to beat. Now, I'll admit when I first heard about it, I was wishing there was more overall upgrades to the Black Shark lineup here instead of just an improved mic. But I really feel like the overall package we have here makes it well, well worth the $200 price point, which I think is extremely fair given the overall headset market out there and what's currently available for the prices. Usually a wireless headset like this is like starting at 250 and up. Speaking of which, last year I loved the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pro. Granted that had a better build quality overall, it also came with the adjustable desktop back, but for $350, as you heard, that mic quality is horrendously bad. For $150 less than that, you're getting a million times better of a microphone. What I'd say is overall equal, like neck and neck sound quality from the drivers here, they're really on par with each other, especially in terms of like EQing and the ability to customize those EQ settings to really push the sound quality without breaking it. Both are outstanding. But I'd say personally, this is a better overall um, feeling headset for me. It's more comfortable to wear than that. So again, 350 versus 200. This is really, really hard to beat right now if you're looking for a brand new wireless gaming headset. I really tried to be nitpicky and think of cons for this. And honestly, I can't come up with one thing where I look at them and I say, oh, that could have been a big improvement or they did this wrong. These are incredible. Now, maybe you're trying to weigh your overall purchase decision on whether to get the 2023 Black Shark V2 Pros or the original V2 Pros. And I think the much improved mic quality here makes this a better buy in the end. Granted, you can find that on sale for around 120, 130 on like Amazon and stuff. I think the extra 70 bucks is well, well worth it here. This guy is currently king. Gotta give it to Razer here, even though it's not the most, you know, refreshing upgrade to a gaming headset that's already been out there and no, you know, physical differences and stuff like that. The upgrades we are getting here makes this the current best. Big, big props to Razer. And guys, I'll wrap it up my review of the 2023 Razer Black Shark V2 Pro. Hope you all enjoyed. If you want to check it out, I'll have a link for you in the description down below. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at randomfrankp. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day.